in and welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community. We beam, in, beam out nearly every day and tonight you are currently watching our Monday night class, which usually is just for subscribers. So if you've been curious about subscribing, this is a perfect way to see what the classes are about. Artists, you can feel free to zoom in when we're uh, about halfway through by clicking on the link in the events area on your app or within the community. You may be beaming in from YouTube or Facebook or listening to the podcast, but you can always get the latest event schedule and notifications at the official Reinventing the Tattoo community. Um, you can find that as the free mobile app through both the Apple App Store and Google Play, or you can find that direct at community.reinventingthetattoo.com. Um, all of the Reinventing, Reinventing the Tattoo Network shows, art jams, drawing groups, interviews, panels, webinars, all of that good stuff can be enjoyed on demand and found in the library as well as on the YouTube and podcast channels. Great to watch on your own, with friends, or to entertain your clients while they're in your chair. We are actually 24-7 uh, beaming out four channels um, at 24-7, reinventing247.com. You can also head there if you're a tattoo artist to enter to win a goodie bag full of Cheyenne cartridges, raw pigments, and other goodie samples. On top of all the special events that uh, happen, we are also having our weekly regulars, and these are all in Eastern Standard Time, as I'm saying them. We have the Reinventing Drawing Groups throughout the week on Sundays at 1 with Jason Leeser, Monday mornings at 9 a.m., and Tuesday at 10 a.m. with Ricardo Sturdevant. At 9 p.m. on Sunday, there's the Tattoo Weekly with Gabe Ripley, Lauren Gregory, and Jake Meeks, where they go over tattoo news from the previous week together, as well as with guests. Of course, Mondays at 9 p.m., there are usually exclusive subscribers classes with Guy, where you can zoom in for real-time feedback, just like you'll be able to do tonight. On Wednesdays at noon, Gabe Ripley has, uh, hosts the Tattoo Now show, bringing in lots of fun guests. On Thursday mornings, 10 a.m., uh, Kira Franklin does her fundamentals group. All skill levels, including apprentices, are encouraged to join that. And um, after that one at noon, Jordan Rookus and Fawn Baker bring you the Tattoo Collecting Podcast. Now that real-time events are starting up again, you can also see some of the reinventing members in person. Uh, this year in Jiminy Peak on October 3rd to 6th, uh, there is going to be the Paradise BYOB. We will be webcasting shows live in person and in virtual space for artists of all skill levels and apprentices as well. On November 12th to 14th, uh, there will be the Brussels Tattoo Convention. Nick Baxter, Ivana, and Gabe will be doing seminars. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we're going to be beaming in an art jam. There'll be subscriber exclusive meetups and public ones. Lots more are also coming out next year as well. And I want to say, say a thank you to our sponsors. We've got Inkjet Stencils. They are super innovative in the stencil game with their Bluetooth printing and full back piece abilities, which you can see from Andre Malcolm. Um, and you can find webinars and free samples in their sponsor area on the app. Raw Pigments are a company that is tapping into the source. You can find them at rawpigments.co. Dermalize Pro, also known as Dermalize, simply uh, worldwide, is a great place to find options for tattoo aftercare. Worldwide Tattoo Events is the largest, most comprehensive, and up-to-date resource uh, for tattoo events worldwide. And that's very helpful right now with all these uncertain dates happening. Um, tattoo Now has the leading edge in SEO and professional development for tattooers of all levels and is now accepting new clients. And of course, the founder uh, of Reinventing the Tattoo, Guy Itchison. And you can find his Biomech Encyclopedia, DVDs, machines, and paintings, um, all that awesome stuff at hyperspacestudios.com. And I want to say a quick thanks to our affiliates as well, Fireside Tattoo Network, the Tattoo or the Apprenticeship Diaries, and EcoFriendlyTattooSupplies.com. If you're enjoying this exercise tonight or are interested in any other tattoo education, you can also check out courses.reinventing the tattoo.com there's a lot of awesome stuff there you can leave positive reviews on the channels uh, help us get the word out and if you'd like to host an event with us or sponsor the community in any way um, you can email management at reinventing the tattoo.com and now i will pass this on to guy for the rest of our class great sandy thank you and thanks everyone for tuning in tonight
Um, for our regulars, uh, as you know, this is uh, our third uh, session uh, this month of anatomical drawing. For people who are new or just dropping in to see what this is about, we do exercises on all different subjects. Uh, the previous month was just about contrast. We uh, work on color. We work on flow. We work on anything, any aspects of tattooing that can be uh, improved by becoming better at drawing. And so that's what our Monday nights are about. And uh, we also have two other uh, drawing groups, sometimes three. Uh, we've got uh, Ricardo Sturdivant um, and Sandy. Is he on Tuesday now or uh, has he stayed on Tuesday? Yeah, he's been staying on Tuesday so far. Okay. Uh, and, Sorry, Wednesday? And, Wednesday? Oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure oh Tuesday. Man, I, I'm I've sounding... mentioned it just earlier. I'll just double check. So, <laughs> yes, Tuesdays. Okay. <laughs> Didn't want to Tuesday. say anything wrong. <laughs> and what time is that? Uh, is that 10 a.m.? Nine, 10 a.m. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, here, Franklin, uh, she does the fundamentals uh, class, which is uh, really for everyone, but she especially is aiming this at people who are uh, at the, the beginning stages of their uh, drawing progression and wanting to uh, learn those foundational things that uh, a lot of us take for granted. Uh, but just like push ups and sit ups, it doesn't matter how far along you are in your. Uh, drawing uh, career, these are exercises that are going to help you. So anyway, uh, you can uh, download the Reinventing the Tattoo app if you haven't already, look in events, which is one of the first buttons you'll see, and you can see all the various different drawing groups. Most of them are free and don't require subscription. This one normally does, but uh, we're allowing you guys in for this evening just so you can see what this is about. Anyway, today we're drawing the neck and head, and I'm not talking about portraits necessarily, but really about the anatomy of the head. And of course, we still want to get good likenesses and that kind of thing. Portraits are another story entirely. So what we're really focusing on is not just the face. We want to be able to get a good face, but the whole, whole head and how it rotates in space, how it connects to the neck, how they position, if you see it from various different angles. And uh, what we've been doing in our previous anatomical drawing sessions is really focusing on breaking the the anatomy down into the simplest shapes. So you can just see it as shapes and draw it that way. But before we actually get started, let me flip my camera around here. I'm just gonna do a quick demo. And of course, I'm not uh, a specialist in anatomical or figure drawing, but I've done quite a bit of it. And we're gonna start by just, um, sort of breaking down the process into the simplest thing. And you don't have to draw along with me right now. I'm only gonna spend a minute or two on this. Uh, one thing I do wanna say though, is if you're drawing digitally, uh, we're gonna be doing some kind of rapid fire, quick drawings uh, here. And I would recommend uh, creating some blank layers ahead of time because that 10 seconds each that it takes to make them, you'll be losing you know, 10 seconds of your two minutes. So go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and sketch this young lady out. So we're not just looking for the oval of the head and anyone who's ever drawn a skull, which is most of y'all, um, knows that usually you're going to start with kind of the, the cranium. So we're looking at, you know, that this jawbone is, is sort of its own anatomical entity here. So we're really looking for the cranium. So almost always, you're going to start out with a simple circle or oval that represents that cranium. And then usually, before I even get the jawbone in, I'm going to try to find the center line. And in this case, you can see it's uh, tracking down to the right here. And so I find that if I get the center line second, it helps me to sort of anchor the middle of the jawbone in place. And so your, your first stage of getting the head is actually very simple really are just getting the cranium, that center line and the jaw. And then you've got another line, which you know, you're not necessarily doing straight lines. They're gonna be curved depending on the uh, position of the head. You can see how the center line of the face is curved. It goes up the cranium and comes down. And then there's another line that kind of follows the top of the ear along the eyes. And you can see in this case, that's a slightly curved line too. And it starts just above, like the ear is right here where the jawbone meets the head. 
And so you get another line there. And one thing that people who haven't drawn a lot of heads and faces are, you know, often make the mistake of just putting the eyes up way too high. And some, some of us have heard this kind of old adage that, yeah, it really is halfway down the head. But it's halfway down the head when you don't take the jawbone into consideration. So really, I try to bring it to just slightly below the center line of that cranium. Although, again, you're always going to be following your judgment. And then if this were a skull, you can imagine where your sockets would be. And you can center your eyes in there. Get your distance between those eyes. It's usually going to be about one additional eye. It's easy to make the eyes too close. And then the center line allows you to get the nose into perspective pretty easily. So often I'll look at the eyes, I'll look at the bottom of the jaw. In this case, I made her jaw way too long and kind of adjust as needed. But I'll try to find, in this case, her eyes. And the line that her nose forms is just above the halfway mark between her eyes and the bottom of the chin. So and you get the bottom of the chin in place, find that halfway mark and go just above that. And now we've got the nose. And then uh, again, you're looking at proportion from the bottom of the nose to the chin. You know, you've got the mouth, the center line of the mouth is about three fifths of the way up. So there you've kind of broken down your most basic proportions. And of course, it just looks like a skull right now. Uh, from there to turn it into the likeness is then going to take a little bit of uh, finessing it. And often that's when, uh, you know, I, I don't mind erasing. I love to erase. A lot of people avoid erasing, but uh, I try to keep it light and erase as needed in this early stage. Um, in her case, you can see there's kind of a ball of the front of her chin. So then from individual to individual, you're going to start seeing not everybody has the same, you know, landmarks. And in her case, that kind of round oval of the chin here is helpful. And then right above that, you can kind of represent the oval that is uh, her lips, which is about the same width as that other oval. And then you're starting to get the, you know, the overall proportions falling into place. The neck. So I like to look at the head and neck together. And part of that is because the neck often follows smoothly from the head. So you look at the top of the head, this curve coming down and it just curves right back out past the ear. So make this curve and then pick it right back up after the ear and follow it back out. And it kind of cuts out here. And then again, proportions, how far from here to here and look at that distance from the chin to where the neck starts in. And so before you know it, you've got your, your basic layout of the head and you can kind of take it from there. You want to kind of do your hair last. I think that, uh, I mean, sometimes just blocking in, you know, important masses or whatever can be helpful. But I think that a lot of people, they get started on the hair early and they hope to make up for shortcomings in the, the likeness by making the hair look good, but that's not really your answer. You're going to want to, you know, not get too carried away with the hair. Again, the hairline and like this mass here could be helpful, but actually doing any detail or fill in on the hair is something that you would want to do once you're feeling pretty confident with the, the rest of the layout. So I'm not going to take this drawing much further. I just kind of wanted to run through these basics. You can sort of imagine how you could rotate uh, it in space. Let's, let's say that, uh, you know, the jawbone. Now it gives you a good, a good way of, of imagining where the, the head is in space, just the way that that jawbone locks on. Uh, and so it's one of those key things, the jawbone, that center line, you can see if you're looking at a straight profile, the center line is gonna be all the way over to the right. Uh, you know, if you're looking at a really straight on photo, that center line is gonna be down the dead center. You're always gonna to wanna to look for where that center line is and make sure that you've got that, your, your basic uh, cranium, and your jaw. Those are going to be your main landmarks to try to get nailed down first. So anyway, we've got uh, the most basic information on drawing the human head. You guys have probably drawn enough human heads that everything that I just said is just a very uh, rough review. 
Uh, from this point on, our references are not going to be on my screen. Sandy's going to be screen sharing them, so you're not going to be able to see my drawings right now. Uh, and that's fine. You're not going to have time to look at them anyway. And we're going to start out with two minutes. And uh, I'd say let's do five or six of these. And we're just going to get warmed up. And I'm going to keep an eye on the clock here. And when we get to about quarter to nine, uh, my time, about a half hour from now, we'll ease into three longer drawings, two 10-minute drawings and a 25-minute drawing. Uh, but uh, we're going to start out with those two-minute drawings and kind of get warmed up. All right. Hopefully everybody's ready. If not, you got two minutes to get ready for the next one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here we go. Okay. So yeah, here we've got a straight on one. And of course you'll have to imagine uh, the skull without the hair. And you can kind of throw in a dot, a line to, to establish that hair, but uh, don't lose the proportion of the head in the process. And then kind of the, where those cheekbones bulge out, you can see where at the very bottom of those cheekbones is where that jawbone anchors. And our center line is gonna be dead center on this one. The forehead is uh, also an important line to get knocked in there and try to imagine how far above that the top of the cranium would be, although that'll be invisible in the, uh, the finished drawing. Of course, these are two minute drawings, so we're not, not gonna get that far along with them. Eye sockets, now, eye socket is really clearly visible in this particular photo. You can kind of see that shaded area around the eyes and imagine how they're set into the front of the face. very exaggerated bulging eye expression. And then you can also see how those uh, eyebrows anchor in very strongly to the bridge of the nose. A couple other landmarks here are the cheek lines, how they angle up the face towards the nose. And then look at the distance from the bottom of the eyes, bottom of the nose, and of course the bottom of the chin is sort of lost in shadow. So. Sometimes when you get a reference that's a little shadowy like this, uh, it's left up to you to, to try to exercise good judgment with that stuff. Okay, well, that's two minutes. Let's move to this next one. All right. Uh, so I'm in a little bit on her. And so again, we've got a, a shape of her hair that partly conceals the shape of her skull. But this time we've got some angled perspective. She's looking, kind of looking up from her head pointed down and off to the side. So look at that center line and uh, you could see where, where that kind of marks the bridge of her nose and the center of her mouth. And then her jawbone is a much different shape, much more tapered. So look at that line from her her right cheek on the left of her face and how that uh, curves down to her hand. Yeah, this is actually a tough one because her bone structure isn't clearly obvious. And her neck, you can see a, a good neckline, that's helpful. You got that big arc of hair and two big arcs of hair, which are good drawing landmarks, but they make it trickier to see her cranium. You can kind of see how the forehead uh, got a couple different angles of hair. You can sort of spell out the shape of the forehead. I'm so happy I can erase. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to erase. Okay, so then you got your center line and your eye line, and uh, oh, and our two minutes is up. Woo. Yeah. Hey, okay, we're gonna we're gonna zoom through these. 
Okay, now this one, you can see the cranium clearly. It's sort of a relief. But sometimes simple can be misleading, right? Now, in her case, you can really see a very simple outline of her head, right? Uh, bottom of the jaw leading all the way around. But then she's got some uh, some kind of funky camera perspective here. That's, that's gonna make it a little trickier. Like the nose, the tip of the nose, it looks like it's just above the halfway mark. We've got this perspective going on, which definitely makes it harder. Faces are often in perspective, like that last one was also a very tricky perspective. The space between the eyebrows and the top of the eyes is also a very important shape to try to suss out a lot of portraits. Of course, we're looking for the head shape more so than the portrait likeness, but you know, that's kind of all part and parcel. If you get a perfectly accurate head shape, the face should probably look pretty accurate too. And she's got that very exaggerated prominent cheekbone. You can kind of see how it bulges out there towards her ear. Glad I don't have to draw hair this time because I never have time, right? But we're all gonna have more time a little bit down the line here, but we're just getting warmed up. And for those who have never joined us before, we always try to do a few quick drawings in the beginnings of our sessions to get loose. I think being tattooers, we tend to get too precise too early. All right, well, so much for that two minutes. Okay, another perspective here. Uh, she's got like, much smaller, more delicate features than some of these other models. So, all right, get that tilted cranium. It's okay for your drawings to be unfinished or to look unfinished. It's definitely okay. This is this is meant to be quick and uh, to keep you on your toes. Okay, you can see there's a little disc on the tip of her chin. Like that other model had that I was demoing on, it's helpful. On the center line of her forehead, her forehead is a little flatter also. So kind of judge the center line accordingly. Yeah, the perspective on this one makes it a little, a little tricky, but they're all tricky, right? I know not everyone here is in love with doing anatomy, but uh, good exercise. Yeah, I've always uh, kind of enjoyed how closed eyes are often just a matter of making the right simple arc. It really is just a simple arc and you've got a closed eye. I'm not gonna bother drawing the hand there. I'm gonna pretend the hand isn't there. It's probably going to be the most wonky looking part of my drawing. And then finally, the hair. I'm just going to do the most rough, basic hairline. You can see a little bit of ear there. Now look at the position of the ear relative to the eyes and how far up the curve. Okay, well, so much for the hairline. A little closer on that one. All right, now this guy's all askew, right? Talk about a wonky center line. Okay, let's do it. Okay. And because of the perspective on this photo, the cranium appears narrower at the top. And that center line, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I just have to, I'm drawing two center lines. I'm drawing the true center line and then the warm belt center line for the bottom jaw. And I'll see what actually happens. This is a unique drawing challenge. Okay. So how far down? Uh, so one thing that's useful in this is just look at the shape between the top of the head and the eyebrows. You got a very distinct shape with particular proportions. That, that should be useful. So I'm going to just work on drawing that shape. And from there, you can start to, to pull it out into the rest of the head. 
can kind of imagine where the rest of the cranium is, but the perspective on this is tricky. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to find that happy medium with pushing the jaw over there without it looking like you got hit by a truck. I think no matter what any of us do, this drawing is going to look jacked up. Yeah. yeah, and of course the bottom jaw can be totally unhinged like this, right? <laughs> especially as a really rough sketch like this, there's not very many things that are gonna make it look right. Okay, well, we'll move on to the next one. Yeah, she's a little bit more straightforward. And in her case, you can see the, the curve of the cranium and how it just comes right down the left side of her head and forms that smooth curve. And imagine how the back of her head how that cranium follows through almost all the way out to her hair. Because her uh, mouth is wide open, you come down from the eyes, you got this kind of long curve from the cheek all the way to the bottom of the chin. You want to measure the proportion from the eye up and then from the eye down and try to get an accurate uh, sense of that. And the hair also forms a couple of very useful landmark kind of curves. So I'm going to use those. I'm also going to go ahead and put the top of the shoulder in because it's, it also helps to make sense out of all the rest of this. I think this will be our last two minute drawing. We're going to move to some slightly long ones after this. We just go up to three minutes, do another four, and then we can open up the Zoom call and start doing some five minute drawings. Uh, yeah, our hour is gonna be up before we know it. So we'll make the most, yeah, that really wide open eyes. These are all things that change and distort the proportions, the natural proportions of the human head. So no matter how much of a sense of, okay, I know how the human head is proportioned you might go in with before you know it you're lost because everybody is so different okay so we're going to do some uh a few three minute ones and that'll be hopefully just enough extra time but uh um uh, let's see we are just about at 8 30 so we're going to do uh let me think here. We want to get to about quarter. I want to have time to, for everybody to hop on the Zoom call too. So let's do three three-minute ones. All right. And then we'll uh, proceed from there. Okie doke. Everybody ready? Here we go. Okay. That's a nice full profile. And very angular, like even trying to get a, a cranium, you still are, it's unavoidable that angle go up there, top of the head, and then how that comes down into the forehead. So when I'm making the cranium, I'm trying to uh, keep all that stuff in my drawing and then follow through from the forehead down into the jawline. The one nice thing about these profiles is you can usually see the jawline a lot more clearly. Also notice how the jawline uh, is different from the neckline. And the neckline also, you know, starts at that front of the chin. The jawline comes down to there, the neckline then kind of doubles back and follows down the front of the neck. So look for, look for ways of breaking up those arcs. Now I'm just looking at the set of lines and shapes that form the left 
the edge of the face, the, the profile. Now you've got the forehead, you've got the dip in for the eye, you've got the nose. You wanna make sure the nose is at the right height relative to these other things so that uh, the distance between the top of the nose and the, uh, the top of the forehead is a little bit less than the distance between the bottom of the nose and the chin. So trying to get all those things relatively accurate without getting too lost and erasing and erasing some more and getting self-critical and frustrated and erasing more and then the time is up. So that happens. And then you've got other landmarks. Always be looking for landmarks. Uh, Skin fold coming down from the nose to the corner of the mouth is a good one. And you can see the shape formed by the bottom of the, of the mouth down to the bottom of the chin. You get a very particular shape there. And then eyes when viewed from the side, it's kind of an interesting shape. You've got the, the eyebrow and you've got that kind of line that goes straight from the innermost part of the eyebrow down to the bottom of the eyelashes. That side view of the closed eye is very particular. And that's already three minutes. You see that extra minute doesn't help a bit. <laughs> Part of my problem is I'm breaking a sweat and it's getting all over my tablet. My tablet's like, hey, I'm wet. I'm not going to listen. <laughs> I've definitely done that too. All right. Well, at least this guy doesn't have a funky expression. And <laughs> it's not that hard to kind of suss out the jawline and, uh, and the cranium. Back of the neck is also kind of uh, extends directly from the top of the head. So I'm trying to look at all these shapes together. And I'm going to take this one to the collar line. I like the, the loop of the collar line. I'm going to keep that loop in the drawing and let that just be the natural end of the drawing because it, it allows for some additional uh, landmarks. Okay, and I'll up that center line. You can kind of see the proportion of the space above the nose versus the space above the, uh, below the nose. It's fairly similar, but the nose is in perspective. The whole face is in perspective. You can really get a sense of that perspective when you look at the nose. And so trying to get that, that look like down and from the side. Kind of being looked at askance. It's interesting how much body language there is and just the tilt of the head. And also this guy is close cropped, so figuring out the hair is a lot easier. You just need the hairline and you pretty much have it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm already really looking forward to those longer drawings, but this is a good warm up. I keep telling myself and tell yourselves that too. This is a good warm up, and my drawings look just as bad as yours, possibly worse. <laughs> And the ear, I don't want to forget the ear. Since I have an extra minute. You have three minutes to draw the self that you're going to have to wear for the next hundred years. <laughs> okay. And then this is our final three minute drawing. I'm going to dry my tablet off. Okay, full profile. Okay, 
And he's not super close crop, but you can kind of get a good sense of the shape of the head. You can kind of see how it would follow through from the forehead without using too much imagination. And just uh, follow that curve all the way to the back of the neck. And you can see where the ear is positioned relative to where the head and the neck meet. Lots of different ways of finding and nailing down those proportions. And you don't have the helpful center line when you have the, the full profile like this. And so you have to construct it in other ways. But yeah, the top of the ear, bottom of the ear. Look for, you know, kind of track across from the top of the ear. You can see where it intersects the eye, the bottom of the ear, and you know, where the bottom of the nose is relative to that. Look for anything like that that you can track across visually and, and nail it down. I think we're going to do a, a fourth three minute drawing. And uh, at that point, we are going to take a short pause and start getting all you Zoom callers on. So, um, I know that right now we're not looking at each other's drawings because we're just screen sharing the, the model's photos. But normally, especially during the, uh, the normal kind of session, but while well, people are able to join via Zoom, you wanna find a way to steady your phone or your tablet so that it uh, can just point straight at your, your, uh, your drawings. And uh, I've got one of these very like cheap $15. It's got a clamp at one end and a thing that holds your phone at the other end. Um, very useful. If you're going to do this kind of drawing group regularly, I highly recommend you grab yourself one of those. Enough extra time to do some erasing on this one. Okay. And then so one last one. Yep. All right. And then after this, we're going to do a total of three more drawings. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is another one of those tricky, like slightly crooked expressions, jawbone. This time, not as wonky as that other dude, but, uh, but yeah, a little bit off. Tricky expression, too. So, yeah, the center line, again, we've got a slightly askew center line. And I imagine there are portrait artists that have a name for this. I am only the most generically trained anatomical artist, but uh, it's enough to get us started. So much of it is just about learning to see. And Clarifying your observations, nailing down what you're seeing, finding the language, the right lines, the right kind of pencil strokes to be able to record what you're seeing. This is a tricky expression. I actually got her eyes down okay. I don't know how I managed that. When I would do the, the live figure drawing, you know, with actual models, you know, sometimes the artists would show their drawings to the models afterwards, you know, and, you know, of course, they're curious to see how was I portrayed? Mm -hmm. You can always tell the kind of day you're having, like, yeah, they're not going to show them today.
And usually I would choose one of the poses where I would just simply do their face. Because it was the, probably the part that was the most challenging to me. Other thing is if it's a dark haired person, but you can manage to make it look like them with only the outline of their hair and nothing but black paper in, inside there, then you know you're getting it down. Again, if you find that you are compelled to do a lot with the hair just to try to make up for the shortcomings of the drawing, then you need to work the drawing more. Okay, so that's our last of our three minute drawings. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, and hop on. Anybody who wants to join the Zoom call? And then we can start looking at each other's drawings. Mine are all terrible, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, anybody who wants to see them, that was, that was that one. You can see how I didn't get a chance to erase the center line, but you can see how I skewed the center line over just a little bit to try to get that. Somehow I managed to get the eyes down. The rest of it, uh, I'm not quite so confident about um, this guy. I think the whole thing could get stretched that way. Heck with it. I'm just gonna do it because I can. Much better. Okay. If only it was always that easy. And by the way, I encourage that sort of thing. Whatever's gonna improve your drawing. Use your tools. Didn't get very far on that. I got so lost in trying to get a jawline right that I didn't finish the drawing. And, you know, often you end up finding yourself, especially with the two minute ones, having to just say, okay, I'm going to focus on the eyes and nose. And the mouth ends up just being nothing. Yeah, I couldn't get anything out of that one. But you can see the construction lines and how the perspective is being dealt with. Didn't get very far with that one. And, uh, course now we're going to have 10 minutes each for the next two and uh well we need to finish at half past so let's let's see how our time goes i'd love to have a chance to look at the rest of your drawings we may only do one 10 minute one and one 20 20 25 minute one let's see what our time is like but uh sandy we got anybody uh hopping on here or we've got quite a few people hopping on hey okay. well i'd love to see what everyone's doing um who wants to go first all right. Anybody ready? I can show mine to get people comfortable. Yeah, let's do that first. And also, I should mention, um, if this is one of your first times, before you join us via Zoom, make sure that you have the volume off on whatever device you are actually watching us on. If you have your Zoom volume on and your other volume on, we get these crazy echoes. Yes. Oh, yeah, look at that. You're doing really well. Okay. Yeah, you got the crooked expression there. Yep. There's that one, and then um, I'll try and get the rest. I had those two guys. Get that. Oh. There we go. Didn't get too far, but I was pretty happy with this guy's shape. Yeah, yeah. The, the face feels like it's him, you know? Yeah. And then there's those ones. Didn't get too far on that one with the mouth. I thought that was going to be easier for some reason. <laughs> It wasn't easy, but you can tell who she is. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the rest of them. Oh, my goodness. I'm just trying out this new angle with this phone. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get it properly. Yeah, there was the first one there. This guy. Yeah, so you're actually getting in there and working the features a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It gets so blurry. Um. Yeah, I really liked her. That yeah, one. I didn't get very far. And there was, of course, if anybody feels bad about their thing, there. Crooked was dude, that. yeah, very dude was confusing to make. <laughs> anybody did a great job with that one. I, I will be impressed. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, now go back to gallery. I'll let in more people. We've got more people coming in. So who's ready to share theirs? I can share. Awesome. Is that Bruno? 
Yes. Good evening, Good everyone. Good evening. Always Good evening, great to guys. see you. Also, I want to say to everybody, if you look at Bruno's drawings, don't get depressed, okay? He's just really <laughs> fucking good. He's just too you know. late. Oh, man. <laughs> too late. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, these yeah. are my, um, my three-minute ones here. Just uh, trying to apply uh, what you were sharing um, at the beginning, uh, just kind of lining up the eyes and and the top of the forehead and the nose and like putting a line in the middle that that was helpful right away um but, what, is, uh, what has been the hardest part for you with these quick ones um, just uh i guess uh you know since i'm 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 keeping it loose so that i can move fast maybe you know kind of like uh you know, defining the uh, the shapes, you know, uh, that kind of, you know, became tricky because it would like force me to spend a little extra time on it, you know, and so right. hard to be loose and accurate at the same time. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But Which I get satisfaction from, uh huh. No, yeah, yeah I, I like it when things line up, you know, like that, that's kind of what I'm trying to focus on the most is the having things. Uh, you know, kind of just line up on the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Thank uh, you, Bruno. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to start start going through everybody's here. Um, and you don't have to share if you don't want, but Kyle, I've got you up next here. Okay, yeah. yeah. So these ones are my three minute drawings. Yeah. Yeah. I can see how you're you're getting the structure there. Yeah. Got your center line. Um, your cranium's a little small in that one, but your proportions aren't bad. Of course, when we've got the full 10 minutes, you'll be able to really assess how uh, accurate your proportions are before uh, you're down, down on it. Yeah, but 10 minutes, you'll be amazed at how unfinished it ends up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I thought the extra minute would have added a lot, but it really didn't. <laughs> no, no, you know, that's, I think we learned that last week with our, uh, our gesture drawings is the extra time just get, gave us more time to get lost, but uh, still. <laughs> and then these were all the two minute uh, ones as well. Yeah. Nice. There's Cricket Dude. <laughs> awesome. Right on. Yeah. Getting it. Um, Jason, I've got you up next. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I drew all of mine on separate layers, but. You know, yeah, you just kind of kinda knocked them all together. Yeah, these are all the uh, the two minute ones that we did. And, yeah. You know, just trying to get better at like really getting the form and the structure, the angles. You know, so are better. you starting with a softer brush and kind of tightening it from there? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Sort of. The, uh, I think I just need to pick a different brush because. Um, everything I'm doing is coming out way darker than what I was originally thinking. So these are all the, uh, the three minute ones. Oh, I recognize her. Yep. But yeah, your structure and proportions are, are there, you know, uh, got the, got the basics down. Let's, let's see what happens when we have another seven minutes to work on, work on it. Right I'm on. probably not going to get too much further. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, know. I try, um, I try, but you know, anatomy is something I've always struggled with. So uh, well, only, only too happy to have this struggle. Mine all look like garbage. They're tiny. I shrunk them all to get them away from the screen instead of just subtracting them. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I'm terrible at people. <laughs> No, those look good. Well, do you feel like uh, um, using this kind of basic approach with more time, you might be able to get something? Is that, oh, I mean, cool. they're, they're decent proportions. It, it's definitely been helpful. A <laughs> couple more minutes ought to, ought to be even yeah. more helpful. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll do 10 and then 25 after this. So, so Ricardo, I've got you up here. Uh, uh, don't show uh, Ricardo's. <laughs> <laughs> These are too good. He's just up on independent study right now. Yeah, right I was. Now, right? 
sorry i jumped in a little late i wasn't trying to not follow what was going on i, I was uh wasn't able to get to it uh, as soon as i wanted to so i just kind of grabbed something and thought i'd try to do something real fast uh yeah. and then kind of go from there so i just picked a girl's face kind of playing with it yeah and uh to anyone not familiar with ricardo he uh, he's doing his sort of a backwards approach compared to, you know, starting with the outline, but that's a totally legit way of getting it there. And uh, his drawing groups on, uh, on Tuesday morning would be a chance for you to uh, play around with that method a little bit more. Of course you can here too, but uh, you could ask yeah. him about, about his approach and go into more depth on it. Yeah. yeah. You're good. Uh, well, man, thank Rod, you. Rod, I've got you up next. <clears throat> okay. So there's um, there's the guy with the crooked jaw. Uh, yeah, he actually these, looks like of mine. Yeah, that's yeah. the one I like. I did pretty bad at the rest of them. I, that one's okay, I guess. And then we got, oh, uh oh, I touched it. So can you see that? Yeah. Uh, okay. Now these are the ones that took a little longer. The yeah, last yeah. one. You I, know, your perspective is really good on these. Get, you know? Oh, your okay. Basic Thanks. Perspective proportion is looking great actually okay all right thank you awesome yeah i love that top right. right one great job um oh, thank lost, you. Thanks, and found, lost and found tattoo i've got you up next uh you are muted in case you want to oh. talk about it there we go hello hi there hi i know i did i had to mute it let's see layers yeah those first ones were pretty tough uh, so you're really yeah. speed drawing here. You're you're doing a, uh, a little bit um, more light. light, light. Nice. Yeah, you probably would have had fun with last week's when we were doing the full figure, but just very quick gesture. Oh yeah, yeah, crooked dude. That looks good. <laughs> <That's> crooked dude. <laughs> I awesome. I think the key for getting that jaw um, was to suggest the teeth so the center line of the teeth on top and you know i just that little suggestion i think Boink. Yep. implied what uh was going on with the jaw there yeah yeah i also th really think that you nailed the shape of the head because he had that sort of strange perspective you know uh but uh, it, it still doesn't look unnatural mm -hmm. and okay. Nice. Thank you. And uh, loose, loosening up uh, also helps, I think, with the, the short the short timing. Yeah, that's why we do them. We're tattooers. We don't do that very, very well. You know? <laughs> uh, she looks good. Awesome. Do you do, yeah. um, do, you do uh, caricatures? Uh, no, I feel, just have filled up a few sketchbooks. And usually I sketch when I'm traveling. But not so much traveling this past year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I gotta say, I'm impressed with these for being two and three minute drawings. Definitely. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, she's just. Oh, um... uh, yeah. I, I, her expression. I just uh, really like that. <laughs> Slightly crooked. Awesome. So, Melissa, I've got you up next. Hey, guys. Hey, you join us? Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. How's the heat wave treating you? Uh, the really bad one was awful, but I did okay. <laughs> Surviving. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's cooled down since then, so it's kind of nice. Um, I'm not wonderful at these gesture drawings, but uh, I think the last one, uh, that was the last guy. Yeah, flip through. That one was awful. <laughs> uh, crooked guy. Crooked dude, crooked. yeah. I think this one's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, nice expression. Nice. Yeah, if I was to say anything about this whole series of drawings, it almost looks like you could have benefited by sizing down just a little bit. Mm -hmm. probably yeah <laughs> makes it easier to go faster i'm just i'm I thinking about odds drawings you know like they were much smaller but it just seemed like they were uh more finished and 
you know, of course you can get just in lo as lost in a small drawing, but. Uh, awesome. Um, Ali, uh, you're not showing up on video. You're welcome to share yours, but uh, otherwise, yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> um, so Ali. this was the first wave that I kind of just merged all together. Nice. Which is your favorite? Um, Startled expression think, lady, pretty good. I think the, yeah, open mouth one I was probably my favorite. Yeah, I like how you did that strong line to represent the bottoms of both of her eyes. I think that just really helped mm -hmm. anchor the eyes so that they, you know, lock together like that. Oh. I'm echoing somewhere. Yep, she's uh, muted herself. That was... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good one. Let's see the three minute ones. And there are those. Nice. Yeah. yeah, these are really good drawings. Yeah, I think the <laughs> the third one over, sort of on the bottom, like the uh, angle on that. If I were to pick a favorite, it's probably that one. But uh, yeah, for, for two and three minutes, you're getting it. Awesome. Thank you. All right, I think that's everybody's for for those. If we wanted to move on to the next, let's do slide. it. Okay, so we're gonna do two more drawings, ten minute and twenty minute, and uh, we might have a little bit of straggler time at the end of the twenty minute one. But uh, okay, so Sandy, I gave you three drawings. Uh, yeah. Let's pick yelling dude for the twenty minute. Yeah. And. Uh, out of the other two, there was the woman's face. Let's pick her. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Yeah, yelling dude. Our 20 minute drawing is going to be nice and challenging. Yeah, that's a fun one. Okay, I'm going to try and make this a little bit bigger here so that we can see it more. Hopefully, that's pretty good size. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, okay. Now, she's very close cropped and. Uh, you know, it's easy to see everything, but she's got a tricky perspective. All right, here we go. Yeah, part of me misses doing this in graphite, but not that much. I actually like to cheat now and stretch stuff and erase and all that. And of course, I erase plenty in graphite too. That's why I like graphite. I never be became one of those people who was really confident drawing in colored pencil. Uh, I mean, I did lots of colored pencil drawings, but always after mapping everything out in graphite. Yeah, so if you're going to imagine her cranium, you can kind of picture like that, that cheekbone on the right side of her face there, how that would sort of follow through to the back of her head, and then how her jaw hangs down from there. Yeah, very tricky angles. And then the bottom of the jaw, you can even see how the tip of her chin, which you can represent with a little oval like some chins, um, then kind of merges down onto the front of her neck. So we've got all that going on. So yeah, I'm gonna get that, that uh, tip of the chin disc in place there. I think that's an important landmark. Yeah, also her neck is mostly hidden and the turtleneck shirt, uh, sweater. So you've got fewer visual cues there too. Yeah, I never look at the clock while doing these because I found it does not help. But with, uh, when we did live figure drawing the longer poses, uh, they would usually give you like a one minute warning. So we'll try to do that with our long 
or a 20 minute one. Just so it doesn't suddenly shut off. You're like, I didn't do the left eye. Okay, so you got just that little bit of hairline that you can see coming up by the ear there. And then you can also see how the eyebrow interacts with that, the space between the hairline and the eyebrow. Yeah, actually, she's got enough good reference points on her that I'm finding perspective on her face isn't actually that hard. It just looks challenging. Well, I shouldn't say that until I have a good drawing, right? <laughs> yeah, it was easy. What, you guys had a hard time? That's why you're coming to me, right? Okay, the tip of the nose, you can find a ball there, like a little circle. That can be really helpful too, like just like the, the chin disc ball at the end of the nose. And not everybody has one of those. My wife has a really good tip of the nose ball. I used to draw her all the time. I don't know why I stopped. Probably because I'd get climbed by a 10 year old if I tried to. You're not drawing me, Dad, huh? <laughs> So then once, once you've got your basic features in place, without getting much farther in it, do a lot of checking and double checking. Just kind of scope around at all your proportions. Look at those distances, you know, the distance between the chin disc and the lower lip, the size of the oval represented by both lips compared to the size of that chin oval, all those kinds of things. Then you start having more time you know, once you've got those proportions, which of course, if you're drawing digitally, you can always tweak them. You can always just say, hmm, let me go into warp for a second here and give her some more forehead. But uh, once you've got your, your basic uh, features in place, get all that double checking in before you get too deep into your refinement which for me, I think refinement on this one is gonna still be a lot of fussing with the outlines, trying to get the envelope of this thing convincingly laid down. I think that uh, I would personally have a hard time doing the Ricardo approach on this. I think mostly because the lighting on her face is pretty flat. I like to focus on the silhouette of like uh, the uh, outside of the face and use those right, as anchor okay. points. Yeah, She's so you've got, go you got there too. So yeah, it's definitely a, I guess we'll see it in a few minutes, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of, she has a lot of angles on like her cheekbones and they're uh, Don't say it. Don't like say right it. by the, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'm not gonna I, say I know what, exactly what you're going to say. I'm not going to say what everybody thinks I'm going to say, man. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, God, here you we go. To, you have to tune in to find out. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Good answer. There you go. They're everywhere, man. They are everywhere. I'm telling you. <laughs> I know they are. <laughs> I'm not debating that. I just Good. think it's funny. Yeah. Oh, Sorry no, for being distracted. I do apologize for being distracting. It's helpful. That's why we do this stuff in groups, so we can distract each other. <laughs> uh, uh, in that case. <laughs> oh, man, looks like a zombie alien with some kind of syndrome. It's a weird perspective. Her tip of her nose is right next to her eye. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it definitely, uh, it's counterintuitive. And 
that's what makes it a good exercise, right? I think that's the way it is with a lot of a lot of these trickier poses. They're sort of counterintuitive. So yeah, maybe I will go ahead and do a little bit of shading on this. I always find it's a good way to, it's another tool you can use to kind of check those proportions like you're talking about. Especially so, yeah. like, so you're just blocking in the, the silhouette behind her. Yeah. Right? I probably should have started this out on a gray canvas holding that with my next one. Since we're doing light stuff. And then I suddenly start feeling really hurried. It's like, okay, now I have to shade the whole thing because I'm committed. Yeah. But of course I'm not, it's just a dry. And you can also see, like even though it is most she is mostly Nagon pods, you can see there's little bits of darker hair along the edge of her head. That kind of thing. So we're at about a minute uh, to 10 minutes. Okay, oh. nine minutes in, okay. Well, so you can all imagine how our, our 20 minute drawing is gonna be, right? It'd be at this point when we're only halfway there, except that's not how it's gonna go. <laughs> Does anyone here know who J. Scott Campbell is? He's yeah, he's my hero. I met him at Comic Con. Yeah, he's oh, a sick. um a pretty famous comic book illustrator. He's known for doing a lot of pinups and uh, fairy tale stuff in a very pinup esque kind of way. Yeah, his are cool, man. I love his stuff. Have you found Gen 13 yet? The Gen 13? Yeah, that was like one of his first uh, comics. I mentioned oh. it one time when we were... Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that, Sandy. You were talking about him. <laughs> awesome. All right. That was 10 minutes. I'm not sure how soon right. we in here. <laughs> well, I guess it's time to move on. Let's move on. All right. Okay, take a minute to breathe. And then this last one is going to mess up your head. <laughs> My head's already messed up. <laughs> I know, right? And yeah, this one is great. It's just got so much energy in it. Oh, and wow. Of course, you could get lost in, in texture. You know, somebody like me could get really lost in texture on this one. <clears throat> But I'm going to follow my normal approach and try to just get down that, that envelope to begin with, but uh, I'm not going to get lost there for very long. I really want to uh, get nice and far with this one. All right, let me know when we're starting that 20-minute uh, timer here. Let's start it. Let's start it. All right, here we there. go. Pink, no blue. I wonder if dude Green. Here, he really yelled. Did he really yell when he did this? <laughs> I think so. Those lips look like it. Those lips look like they the were yelling. Fucking just stepped on a Lego. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's the only thing that could ever possibly cause that kind of an expression. <laughs> I 
I said, I do chalupas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was this, I don't know why the story just always stuck in my head, but some like super drunk frat boy was uh, really pissed off at the uh, Taco Bell because they only gave him one. And he actually climbed out of his window and tried to climb yeah. in the drive up window. And he was like, oh my yeah. gosh. He got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Panic drunk frat boy dude got stuck oh. in the window. That's and awesome. uh, all I can think of is like, you know, those back in, in the medieval days when they like and put you in the town square and like lock your hands yeah. up things that the townspeople could come by and like spit on you or whatever. <laughs> yeah, everybody in that Taco Bell could have had a minute with him, but they probably. Oh, very good. Yeah. Okay. Where to even begin with this? I'm finding that like all the traditional approaches just fall apart here. So I'm just looking at all the shapes here, all the proportions, and trying to make some kind of sense of it. Yeah, that center line. Yeah, I mean, there's some use for that center line, but uh, you can see uh, how radical this whole pose is. Like the way the upper lip extends beyond the nose. And that's, that's back to that draw what you see, not what you know kind of idea. Because when looking at something like this or any, any photo reference, really, uh, there's a part of you that might be like, the human face doesn't look like that. <laughs> Here it is. This is the actual reference. So, you know, and, you know, the same thing happens when you're drawing from life. You're looking at a foreshortened hand and it just looks like a weird lump. And you're like, well, I'll just draw hands the way I know hands. And then it just doesn't look right. It really should have drawn was a weird lump. <laughs> Just has to be exactly the right weird lump. Exactly. Not that lump on the left, the one on the right. No, the other right. <laughs> I feel like th this needs a caption. By the time we're done with this drawing, we need a caption. <laughs> I can't think. I can't think of anything else except for that chalupa joke. That's just, uh, <laughs> nothing. I don't think anything's going to beat that. We might yeah. be stuck the But we'll try. We can try. I like you know, life cereal. This is made slightly trickier by the fact that there's heavy shadows. And so we lose the details to the right of the eye. But, you know, usually when that happens, I try to just embrace it and let that be just the way the drawing is. Let that be the structure of the drawing and try to work with it. No more Cheerios. It's something with, uh, oh, it's like definitely that. <laughs> Love the eyes, though. The eyes are really expressive. Yeah. I was thinking full metal jacket, too. About, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. But Gatorade is not better than water. <laughs> <laughs> Bronda. Yeah. water you mean like they put in the toilets <laughs> uh, yeah you would want to drink that but it's got electrolytes <laughs> <laughs> from that movie idiocracy oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sci-fi comedy that has become a documentary yes <laughs> that, <laughs> that's the one man getting creepishly realistic now you listen here brother we're gonna meet in the octagon I'm going to show you who the real president is. Yeah. What was that guy's name? Camacho, right? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. This one goes in the mouth. This goes in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Guy with the wind, man. <laughs> Uh, didn't I tell myself I was going to do the gray foundation on this? I didn't. 
That's like saying you're not going to draw in the same layer again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Heather's got a point. <laughs> oh, man. Melissa, I saw your uh, your feedback for Adobe with the uh, draw a new layer. <laughs> Couldn't help yeah, it. that was classic. Yeah, we all appreciate that. For sure. I literally get to the end of any other comment. Thank <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you. That's what the guy is screaming. He's like, wrong layer, not again. <laughs> 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 that's right, that's right. <laughs> um, Redo on la new layer is not an option. <gasps> oh, that's good. Bruno, dude, that was great. That's what he's angry about. He was just that's drawing scary. for six hours on the wrong layer. Definitely. That's, that's the sort of emotion that comes up behind that. <laughs> yeah, man. God. Fucking get at me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this iPad is too expensive to throw across the room. <laughs> yeah. Feeling yeah. it, man. The little crinkles in the nose are so wild. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could zoom in on that and you've got a whole landscape there. Yeah. Anybody feeling not in a hurry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't don't tell me how much time we have left, please. I'm actually, like, I'm actually was, doing semi that, well. Uh, with this one. What was that artist's name who joined us earlier? Who? Uh, uh, I think we just had the name of her shop, but the one that did the great speed Lost drawing. And found. Ah, yes, yes. I imagine 20 minutes for her is enough time to draw the whole freaking thing. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ricardo's probably already done. He's blocking in color by now. He's on his third rendition of a sketch. No, I was drawn in the wrong layer, dude. <laughs> <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Glad we can all feel each other's pain, though. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I, uh, I don't see a lot of people who pull off this kind of texture in portraits that effectively. You know, you've got, you've got your few outliers. Steve Butcher, of course, is the texture maniac. But, you know, the rare times that I get to do portraits, I almost take more of a Nico approach, sort of simplify it down a little bit. But with this one, it would just be that would be almost a crime to simplify. Definitely need to uh, show all the wrinkles to get that full gravitas. <laughs> yeah, one, one thing, another thing about the mouth being this wide open is you don't see a lot of teeth. The teeth are kind of like mostly hidden behind the, the lips. Just enough. And you can also see the bottom row of teeth. You're actually seeing inside of that bottom row of teeth a little bit. Here it comes. <laughs> oh. Okay. Let me go make the obligatory throw. She's a velociraptor. <laughs> she definitely is. I've mean, been wondering if you're a velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. That's great. So I'll only read you if you stop. Eleven more minutes. Eleven more minutes. Okay, I'll tell you. All right. The title of tonight's disruption is Boulder on a Pogo Stick. <laughs> interesting hmm. okay so yeah so now we're down to our last uh and sandy can we if we run out of time can we keep this image up on the screen or is oh, it yeah. just this is, this is just on my uh on my thing on oh, my okay screen. not uh 
because we're going to just go all the way to the end of the session, keep this open. Yeah. No time uh, limit. Yeah. So what I'm working on right now is I know I'm not going to get that far with the whole head, but I'm going to try to get the show the. Oh, yeah. this, is, this, this is just on my, uh, on my thing. Oh, okay. Oh. Gotcha. Because we're going to just go all the way to the end of so the session. We've got somebody who's ever just joined up. Uh, ended up needs to mute their. Um... Okay, maybe they've already done it. Excellent yeah. job. <laughs> you don't have to mute the sound on your Zoom call, but you do have to mute it on the device that you are actually listening to this on. But on your Zoom, that's where you want to have your sound. Yeah, uh, another thing I'm noticing is a lot of these these wrinkles, they seem to radiate outward from this point, like right, right at the bridge of the nose or something. There's this sense of exploding outward from there. But I'm also finding that as I try to dial in these wrinkles, I'm losing some of the expression. Mm -hmm. So it's tricky because each, each wrinkle says something. They all add up into making this expression. There's also just a certain amount of the face that is sort of lost shadow and uh, need to have the same amount of my drawing lost in shadow or, or the expression is just different. And yeah, um, when our time is up, love to see everybody's last couple of drawings, even though I'm not necessarily super thrilled to share mine because they're not wonderful. <laughs> uh, definitely want to see where everybody else got theirs. That's okay. Mine will make you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and two. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Mine will make everybody probably feel all right about this last one. <laughs> oh, it's bad. <laughs> okay. We are here to learn not to show off our greatness. Exactly. Mine's going to suck. Actually, this last year or so of teaching these classes is really, I don't want to say it's put me back or definitely has put me back in, in more of a student mindset because uh, you know I've reached a point where I'm I'm pretty good at a certain limited kind of palette of things and that's I think happens to a lot of tattooers you know you start to get into a specialty and like it or not it just happens you, know, you end up with clients who are like oh dude I love that thing you did on so and so can you do something like that on me and before you know it that's what you're doing uh, and nothing wrong with that, but, uh, you end up not getting as many opportunities to stretch yourself. Just step outside that normal. Yeah. And of course, we're also, like it or not, all of us trying to make ourselves look good when we make art and we don't want to do bad art and we want to be able to show our skills off. And so I think without even trying, we start avoiding the things that we aren't very good at or not as practiced at. And uh, next thing you know, you end up, I don't say in a rut, but you kind of typecast yourself. end up like that actor who only plays people to get killed right <laughs> like in star trek where that's the red shirt guys yeah, yeah, who's gonna die right. yeah what's what's the dude's name francis bean i think he was boromir in lord of the rings but i guess he played 40 different characters that died and finally he's like sean <laughs> <laughs> bean Sean Bean. 
Yeah, he was in equilibrium and he died relatively fast. Yeah. Imagine that being your lot in life. Yeah, I'm the dude that always dies. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. Equilibrium is a great movie, too. Yeah, it is. I didn't see that one. Oh, highly recommend it. It's kind of Big Brother kind of. Okay. Uh, Yeah, you'd you'd love it. Bale. Um, like most and, yeah, Sean Bean at one point, but he definitely dies. So I'm sorry for that. Sorry for anybody <laughs> that hasn't seen that movie. <laughs> but it's Sean Bean. You know, he's, you know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm more disappointed that you haven't just watched it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad that I told you. <laughs> you love a it, guy. It's great. It's a good flick. Oh, definitely very good um uh, action like uh fight scenes they do um katas with guns instead of just uh their hands hand-to-hand combat it's all with guns it's it's very it's a good one yeah it's like kind of dystopian becoming desensitized losing track of what it's like to be human kind of thing Still talking about equilibrium, yeah. yeah. Oh, now okay. <laughs> we're just talking yeah. about real life, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's been me during this entire anatomy <laughs> like, section. <laughs> like I'm, not, I, I'm just, yeah. It's humbling, you know. But you're doing it, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. The important part. I'm not going to not do it. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, sit back and be like, man, I can't wait to draw more anatomy. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I have to say, all right, once again, I'm going to get in front of my students and be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but uh, that's why we're here. True, mm-hmm. true. We're all here to learn and get better. And that is what matters. This isn't the beer line. That's the beer line. <laughs> Finally, I feel like it's starting to look like the dude again. It took like I, I kind of veered away for a while and took a little bit to just try to recover the likeness. But yeah, okay, we're about there, and I think I'm gonna quit. Uh, okay, we've got about would, a minute and a half left on the 20 minute mark if we want to. Yeah, anybody that. wants to keep going? Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw in a couple of highlights, just a couple. And because that's all it needs. And then as soon as that minute and a half is over, we'll have a second for looking at drawings before daughter inevitably shows up and says, it's night then. (laughs) All right. Pretty happy with mine. I'm much happier with mine than I thought I was going to be, that's for sure. I mean, one, one thing I don't like is when I have a few pretty, like, decent rough drawings, and then it's finally time to do the longer drawing, and, and it looks awful compared to the quick ones. <laughs> more often than Because like, we try and challenge ourselves with these nice, tricky ones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, one thing I did with this was I definitely kind of did a Ricardo, and I, uh, I tried to almost blur my eyes and just... There we go. The impression of it without like there's not much in the way of accurate lines anywhere in this. And uh I think that that was probably the right way to approach it. Yeah. So there's there's shouting dude. Nice. Uh, mm, yeah. But yeah, you can see how rough it is when when you get in there. And uh you know, if I were doing this in a uh figure drawing workshop I would probably be using charcoal, you know, 
and it would be about this rough. But uh, yeah, let's see you guys. Awesome. So I'm going to try and go in order so that I can okay. see everybody's. Uh, Melissa, you coming up first? Nice. Yeah. You can definitely see the expression somewhat. The, the thing, the place where I think you drifted off a little bit is in the shape of the mouth. And of course, that was very tricky. But the, uh, the proportions of like the, I tried to think of it as like a six sided shape. You had like a very short line along the top, a very short line along the bottom, two angled lines along the left side and the right side. And I was trying to find those ideal proportion between those and that might have given you a little bit more of a grip on it you got the uh the eyes pretty well eyebrows look good um eyes is where i spent the most time yeah yeah uh again you might have had a little bit more luck if you went you know 50 percent smaller can i see your 10 minute drawing oh yeah yeah not bad a little off in the eyes, but uh, I'm happy with right. like that instead of looking, here. Instead of the eyes looking like they're in perspective, it just looks like one is lower than the other. Right. And was it was it you that I had commented on the drawing with the surprised girl and how the yeah. eyes were anchored? No, no, it was somebody else. But you might recall that one. It was the surprised girl, and I really uh, thought it was effective how there was a a line kind of going across the face that kind of anchored the bottoms of both eyes. And sometimes when you're trying to get the eye alignment, you'll need to do that. For sure. Thank you. Uh-huh. I'll show mine now. Here. There we go. Hey, yeah, you, you got their personalities there. I think that the girl has not quite enough forehead, like her cranium could probably come up just a little bit. Definitely. And uh, yeah, shouting dude, uh, getting the exact expression was really hard. Yeah. Well, it's about 80% there. Definitely. Yeah, and there's so many shadows that I just started like playing with at the end and I'm like, oh yeah, no, that would have been necessary to really get the forehead and yeah, it's fun though. Um, Bruno, we've got you up next. Curious to see Bruno here. Uh -huh. it's, yeah, uh, this was uh, very challenging, especially compared to to the ten minute one. Was it uh, this one? Can um, we both a little closer? Yeah. So this was my the first one. Yeah, you look good. I lined it up, I just started placing the darkest and the lightest values on it and just kind of started to come together. And uh, here's uh, the screaming dude. It's really tricky to, you know, find, you know, everything, the place of everything at first. Uh, and then it was just uh, a little bit of a ticket. All the, all the normal, like, tricks and shortcuts for drawing the face kind of fell apart on this one, you know? Uh, yeah. That looks like But yeah, it was fun. It was a fun challenge. Nice. Nice. Uh, Melissa, I've got you up next here. We already have Melissa. Oh, did we? Yeah. Oh. It's the oh. first one. How did I do that? I'm sorry, Melissa. Um, and then Allie, there must have been a little bit of a uh, mess up there. Boom, boom, boom. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I definitely really struggled with all of this. <laughs> I'd say with the, the woman's face, the, the biggest thing that stands out to me is just the distance between the upper lip and the bottom of the nose. Uh, it seems like a little bit of a stretch. So there, there's a few, just a few other clues you can look for uh, proportion in. But, you know, your angles are good. The eyes are lined up the right way. Uh, if just the upper features and the mouth were to just be brought together a little bit, 
Um, and of course, you're digital, so you can do that. And then if you don't mind moving your tablet over a little bit so we can see shouting, dude. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, you, you really got, like, his features are lined up the right way. The expression is pretty close, too. It's a good drawing. Thank you. Right on, Ali. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Kyle, I've got you up next here. Looks pretty good. And then I got the 10 minute one up here in the corner as well. Yeah. What was the hardest part of it for you? Um, I think definitely getting these eyes in here because like you make one wrong move and the whole look of the face just completely changes. Yeah. Yeah, I, that was one of the, the tricks for me. And I think it's one of the reasons why I ended up simplifying mine so much into bigger brush strokes, kind of working with blurred eyes. Is I, I found that uh, once I started getting more specific than that, the expression really started to drift into a, other places. Mm, but okay, yeah, not bad. I think Thank that the, uh, the lower lip doesn't protrude as much as it needs to. Uh, but other than that, the uh, expression is pretty good. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Jason, I've got you going here. Cool. Uh, so Jason did Candyman. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Come from there, Kaya. Okay. Leave the room, please. I saw you, aren't you? I'm going to critique everybody's drawings. It's only going to take me a minute. <sighs> All right. I never was able to. So yeah, the, the thing I'm noticing on this is the, the shape of the mouth. I found that his mouth was more broken down into angles, where I'm seeing that this is more broken down into curves. And sometimes looking at the entire face, like almost like a super low res wireframe drawing where everything is just straight lines uh, is a good way to, to help yourself find the structure. Nose looks good the way that it uh, is kind of pinched up from the expression. Like the basic proportions of the expression is pretty good. One of your better drawings. Uh, but yeah, maybe, maybe uh, next time we do faces, try working more with angles. Uh, okay. You know, I almost think wireframe. Sometimes that can help. Thanks. You got um, your oh, yeah. Do you have your 10 minute one? Uh, yes, which didn't really get that far. Okay. Yeah. But you know, I'm you're doing it. Over it. Twice. Yeah, you, you got your center line in the right place. Uh, the distance between the features uh, all looks accurate. So yeah, with enough time, you could uh, easily dial it in. Awesome. Uh, Atomic Injections, I've got you up next. Uh-huh. Rough. <laughs> no, shouting dude looks good though. You know, the, the shape of the mouth is pretty good. I think that the the teeth, those two teeth are slightly too far to the left. Yeah. Uh, if you were to get those, you know, more centered in the top of the mouth, uh, you'd have it a little bit closer. And then since you've got a couple of those wrinkles between the eyes, sneaking a couple of those into the nose, because the nose has all these compressed wrinkles in it, really makes it, you know, it helps show that expression. Uh, that might help too, but uh, like the structure of the head, you got down pretty good for being such a tricky expression. I appreciate. I feel like the other one looks like Michael Jackson went back to drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, lost and found. I've got you up next. And uh, if yeah. you don't mind sharing your name, that'd be cool too. Hey, it's Allie. Oh, okay. Hi, Allie. <laughs> They're Allie. Hello. You got two out. Okay, so that's maybe it's it's good that you're Allie lost in the time. These are great. <laughs> I mean, your drawings are impressive to begin with. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, they're cool. They're real cool. Yeah. It, apart from just having, you know, the the accurate expression, they've just got a good style to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can tell that you've drawn people before. Uh, yeah. Uh, I like how you took the top of the nose and just brought it into a triangle like that. Just boom, you know, just pinched it together. Because even though the photo didn't necessarily look like that, I think That's it's a way to show that expression because 
uh, he definitely did. It did seem to all concentrate to the point, you know, uh, all the wrinkles, all that tension seemed to concentrate to that point right between his eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, also really good job with just the minimal rendering in the neck and chest area. Uh, like how you rough that in. Yeah, it's killer. Thanks. Yeah, on, on her, I had some trouble getting that uh, angle perspective. Yeah. I lost that. I kind of straightened her out as we all have a tendency. To right, do. right. I can see like her mouth is closer to the center of her face and than it should be. Uh, yeah, that was a very tricky perspective. And, and I don't know if, uh, if you started with a center line or not. And, you know, I don't always do that either, but sometimes uh, if I'm having trouble citing the features, sometimes I find that to be helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, tonight, I didn't so much do the grid and the center line. Uh, I think because of the selection of models and, they, you know, because they had such unusual expressions. It was less, right, like, yeah. less like models in a room holding a stick, you know, like at an art <laughs> school or something. Right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Because they're photos, you've got these expressions that normally you'd simply could not hold for any length of time. Yeah, that's for sure. These are great. I'm, oh, uh, thank I'm, you. I'm uh, uh, inspiring to see this approach. Right. This is fun. Mm -hmm. Rod, I've got you up next. Yeah, okay. good. I like these expressions. The girls kind of laid back expression. Uh, okay. You might have just together just a little bit and that her right eye on the left side might need to be just a tiny bit higher but uh she looks pretty good her expression is good the getting the expression on the mouth when you're looking at her from below is a tricky thing i think that you did that pretty well now yeah. shout it you got his expression that's a, a really good uh you know mapping mm -hmm. that expression I think that the whole head is a little bit too tall and narrow. Mm -hmm. I think okay. Out to the right, but you know, just to warp it. You got it. Um, but yeah, I think you really got that expression. Um, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I saved it at the last minute, I think, because it was really bad for probably <laughs> eight, maybe 18 minutes. I, I thought, man, I still should start over. But yeah, <laughs> right, those that, dark, whatever you brought it back together. Yep, yep. Nice, um, Maria. I'm getting you up now. Hey. There. Hi. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. It's my first time. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you. All right. So this is my guy. Yeah. Um. I don't know. It was tricky. I wish I had more time. <laughs> I think uh, one of the things that, that helped me was when I was trying to shape the mouth, I found that, you know, in the photo, his tongue doesn't really stick out, but it's visible. And I was a little stuck on that until I realized that you're seeing that whole bottom row of teeth at the bottom and the tongue actually is lower height than those oh. teeth. So, yeah. Once I got those in place, it's like, ah, bingo. Makes yeah, sense. Maybe yeah, if I was able to zoom in more, I would have probably seen that right there. It looks like his tongue is sticking out way too far. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, if anybody uh, wants to uh, play with those more um, on the uh, community group on the app, there is all of the reference photos as well. Oh, okay, cool. The, the other thing I'd say is that the eyes are a little bit high up uh, for that perspective. It just looks like his head is tilted back. Um, yeah. And I'm just curious, uh, if, would you be willing to show a couple of your quicker drawings? Um, yeah. Did you want to look at the other one with the girl, the 10 minute one? Yeah. Doesn't yeah. look a girl, but. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the uh, proportions aren't bad. You know, the, they, they are centered more, uh, kind of like, uh, Allie's drawing. Uh, it's not in as much of a off to the side perspective as the actual photo, but she looks straight and proportional and, uh, yeah, not bad. The, the nose is, yeah. is a glitchy, a but probably ran out of time on that one. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just curious to see some of the other drawings so I can see your construction lines. 
Okay, yeah. I mean, I didn't really get far with those ones either. Um, Nobody did. <laughs> Sorry, I have a baby. No. <laughs> Stop jumping on me. <laughs> I'm not the only one who tried to disrupt. <laughs> <laughs> all right that was that one um that was like the last one i think the girl with the scrunched up expression and that one's no that one's bad <laughs> <laughs> um yeah see i didn't really get far with that, like any of these yeah I and i have a two-year-old over here jumping on me yeah well you know what for having a two-year-old jumping on you you still did the session that's great uh and <laughs> That last couple of drops were, were looking pretty good. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, maybe you can join us for our other drawing group. Keep going with this. Cool. I'm, I'm excited. Thank you. Hey. Uh, hey, thanks for joining us. And then uh, last, we've got Ricardo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So she looks a little zombie-ish. But... <laughs> Slightly. Yeah. I'd say vampire-ish than zombie-ish. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's the... the pin the ear and the nose is kind of funny yeah yeah her nose was tricky because of being such a you know perspective from below mm -hmm. and also getting the shape of the cheekbone and jaw and i can see how you're you know using the shading behind it to try to pop that out right yeah and then the yelling man yeah i started spending more time after i went through with all my Mid tones. I started going back in with the dark, like reds. They kind of bring it out just a little bit more, and I ended up just spending more time in this area than I did over the rest of the piece. But yeah, in terms of that, I I kind of like when drawings, you know, have some parts they're more finished, and other parts that are just suggested. You know, mm -hmm. uh, get to really see the process. But you can see how the eyes and the top of their nose are scrunched like that, and how they're kind of, you know, there's that focus of energy towards the bridge of the nose uh your proportions are good your basic proportions are really solid cool looks good man thanks dude awesome. well this has been a great session uh yeah anyone's got any questions or final comments before we wrap up for the night uh anyone who uh has just been following us along on youtube uh glad you could join us and uh if you've got anything you want to post post it in the app um what else uh sandy do we ever come up with a hashtag for uh um the, the anatomy drawings or we have not come up with a hashtag mm. yet yeah we probably should uh i mean the easiest one's always just reinventing blank <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hashtag yeah reinventing blank all right. Well, let's use the hashtag reinventing anatomy. Anyone who wants to post any of this stuff this month on your other social medias, that's going to be our, our hashtag reinventing anatomy. I'll probably post yelling dude here. And uh, yeah, anyone who wants to, uh, you know, work on yours a little bit more. Uh, Sandy, where are you going to have the references available? Um, those are right now on the stories in Instagram, but they're also just going to be in the community group uh, on the app. Um, there's a little post that I put up with all of those. And then if you're having trouble finding them, you can email me, Sandy, at reinventingthetattoo.com, and I'll help you find whatever you need. Outstanding. Okay. Well, hey, fabulous session. Thank you all for joining us. It's been a lot of fun. I hope uh, I'm not the only one here that broke a sweat. And, <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> yeah. We'll be continuing our anatomy next week, it's going to be action poses. I'm looking forward.